This is my 2000 Honda GL1500 Goldwing. I get a lot of questions about this bike, but by far the most questions I get are about this right here. This is a little tiny computer that I built and programmed. I designed it, built the circuitry, pro wrote the programming for it, and built it, installed it. I had a lot of people ask me to build them one and I haven't ever actually put this thing into production or, or did anything other than this one prototype. It's fairly complex to install, which is the main reason why. Because I get so many questions about it, I thought I would answer some and show exactly what it does, how it works, and why I built it. So, I will start by turning on the bike. It should bring it up. As you can see, the copyright date on it is 2012 because that's when the last time I updated the software was. I built this thing quite a few years ago. So there's the main screen. You can see it's showing me the ambient temperature inside my garage. There's a little toasty 77.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Shows I'm in first gear. Shows the voltage of the battery. And it shows some other stuff here which includes a, a clock and sat and other stuff which I'll explain. Controlling it, I built two little control buttons right over here, as you can see, right there. One is a momentary up-down, as you can see, push it down, push it up, and the other is a push button, momentary push-in button. So this is control up and down, and this is execute. And that's the entire interface for the entire bike PC. There are no other controls for it. There are some sensors, a number of sensors. Obviously it has to have a temperature sensor, so let's have a look at that. The temperature sensor is actually hidden right down inside this vent. I don't know if we can actually see it or not, but there it is, right in here. Maybe if I get a light on in there, you can see it better. So there's the temperature sensor right there. And that is a one wire Anyone knows anything about computers and electronics? Uh, it's a, a type of serial temperature sensor uh, that communicates digitally. So all the actual sensing and conversion is, is done actually in that tiny little device down in that vent. And it's covered in uh, heat shrink tape to make sure that it's uh, waterproof. On top of it, there's a light sensor, which is nothing more than a little CDS cell. And what that is used for is to dim the screen at nighttime. So if you see here, the screen actually is backlit, it lights up. And if I were to cover up that cell, in a short while, the screen will actually dim down a bit. And I, I did write code in there that makes it take some time to do that. So that going under a bridge or whatnot doesn't have the screen flicking up and down. I don't know if you can tell that well on this camera, but the screen has dimmed down quite a bit. It's getting dimmer and dimmer now. And now it's you know, it's almost at the lowest image, the lowest brightness now. And there it is. It's, it's barely visible in this light in here, but at nighttime that's, that's about the, the brightness you want. So obviously if I take my finger off there, it's going to start brightening back up again. So it does that automatically. You don't ever have to change the brightness of the screen. That's an important feature right there. Um, and of course, that's all done in code with, with uh, uh, the, the, code, the, the program that I wrote that measures the light and averages it over time to adjust the, the, the brightness and so on. So this is the main screen. If I push the momentary button, it switches between screens. So each time I press it, it cycles between various different screens. So, now I, I should note that this is actually running on a tiny USB Amtel processor. So this is not the kind of processor where it's like Windows where you just say, hey, show this on the screen and give it some words. You actually have to draw, this screen is just a bunch of pixels and you actually have to draw everything manually on the screen. So I can't just say, hey, draw a seven, I have to say, draw these dots on the screen in the shape of a seven. So it was quite 
complex to build this thing. Um, the programming involved harkened me back to programming in the 1980s where you were actually working on direct hardware with no interface libraries to do all the heavy lifting for you. You have to do everything yourself. So, let me go through the functions on this. Focus. So we'll push, go to the first screen. And this is fairly simple. I have heated gear on this bike. So I have two outlets right here. One for my gloves, and one for my jacket. And they plug in right there. And so I created a circuit with a couple of MOSFETs that will, high power MOSFETs that will allow me to adjust the heat going to each of these. And I can click up and down to adjust how much power. And in fact, it's not adjusting the level of power. These are on uh, a duty cycle. So it, when I put it like this to one, that means it's on for one second, off for 10 seconds and so on. So here it's on for six seconds, off for four seconds. If it's on 10, it means it's on continuously. Uh, and the things heat up and cool off slowly enough that that's more than enough. You, you don't feel it turning on and off. It just adjusts the overall temperature of the individual things. So there's my gloves and there's my jacket. So I can adjust those individually. And yes, I drew those little pictures of a glove and a jacket. Uh, audio. In my radio, right here, the Goldwing comes with an AM FM radio with a cassette. I've never actually used the cassette in this. I'm, I'm sure it, it probably works, maybe. Maybe not, and it goes in there. Maybe it does, I've never actually tried it. However, I took the radio apart and I installed some relays so that I could have some auxiliary inputs. One of them is this phone that plugs in right here, and the other one is, uh, Bluetooth, I believe I set it up. I don't remember, but it, originally I had a satellite radio on here. That's what sat means. So right there it says sat, which means, hey, it's listening to the satellite radio right now. So if I cycle to the audio, I can switch from that to auxiliary, which is where I had uh, my Bluetooth plugged in, or AM FM radio, which is the actual radio built up into the bike. So if I actually switch that on. At Kent State University, there's my radio. Our success is our success. And you can see it's cycling between the various inputs. You'll fly your first solo, perform your first. Uh, the next screen is brightness. So what this is, is it change, allows you to change the level of brightness it goes down to at nighttime. So if I put it all the way down to zero, there is no light coming out here. And that means at nighttime, this thing will be completely dark. So I think I had it at nine, which is about the correct brightness for at nighttime. So if you, you find it a little bit too bright or too dim, you can make that adjustment. And lastly, the options page. Let me first explain what temp graph and temp scale are. So if we see here, right on the right of that, we see a little graph scrolling across there. And what that is, is temperature over time. And Currently, this is set for 45 minutes, so every 45 minutes, this will have scrolled past. So right now, we're seeing here's what it is right now. Over here is what the temperature was 45 minutes ago, and this scale is dynamic, so it will automatically adjust as the temperature adjusts. So we can see here that over the last seven minutes, the temperature in this, my garage here, has actually gone up. Uh, it's now 78.4, so, and that's reflected in that graph. So it gives you a really good trend idea uh, it, of exactly what temperature you're encountering. If you suddenly think, geez, I'm, I'm feeling a bit cool on a ride, and you look down there and you can see the temperature has dropped precipitously in the last five minutes, then you say, oh, you, now I obviously realize that the temperature is dropping, maybe I need to pull over and put some clothes on. So it gives you an idea of what the temperature is doing over time. However, there are other things I may want to put in there. Well, actually, before we get to that, let's go back into our options. And I can change uh, the temperature, oops, the temperature scale. And if I actually remember how to work this, to 60 minutes, 90 minutes, or however, 120 minutes, or as little as five minutes. So if I go back here, you'll see it's now, well, actually it's, it hasn't collected the data properly. So, but um, if I left it like that for a while, we would be seeing five minutes. So uh, I find that 45 is, is pretty good. Um, now, 
I can also change the my jacket. Instead of having a jacket on, I might have heated boots. So I'll change that to boots. Now, if I go back in here, you see I have glove and boot rather than glove and jacket. It doesn't actually change any functionality. All it does is just change the name and the actual little picture there. Um, before I actually go back here, the other option I wanted to show you was temp graph. So let's change that to off and exit out. And now you can see my temperature graph has now changed to two little bars with one is G for glove and one is J for jacket. And what that does is it shows what level of heat I've got going for each of those. And if you notice, if I don't do anything and just let it sit for a few seconds, it will eventually just reset back to the main home screen. So if I've made that change, I can just take my hand off, ignore it, and it'll come back here. As you can see, it's now indicating my glove is you know, probably on about a three there and a J is on a seven. So it just gives you an indication of where your heated gear is set to. Uh, and I find that useful, especially when uh, it, your temperature is changing all the time. You keep changing uh, the settings of your heated gear and you don't remember where it is. So that's, that's the reason I put that in there. So I tend to use that more in cold weather, obviously, and in the hot weather, I'll have the, the temperature shown. Negative LCD, what that does is exactly what you think. It's white on dark or dark on white or, or whichever the reverse is. Um, I thought originally this might be the better way to have it show up, but it turns out that it's much better uh, on with positive LCD, so I left it that way. And then debug mode which will turn on, and that's basically just for helping me figure out why it isn't working correctly. So if I turn that on, you'll see there's two tiny little dots down here. If I can actually get it to focus in on that. Maybe, maybe not. And what those are showing is the actual yeah, duty cycle of the heated gear. So you can see the one on the left is my gloves and the one on the right is the jacket. And you can see how it's turning them on and off to, to adjust the amount of heat going into there. The dot on the far left indicates that it's in satellite mode and as I switch it from one to the other mode, that dot changes. So it's just a very simple little debugging tool I built uh, into there for myself to help when I was actually designing it. And there's one, uh, is that, there is one more function in there. Let me just turn off my heat here so I'm not surprised next time I go for a ride. Actually, there's two more functions. One is this timer. That timer starts from zero as soon as you shift out of neutral. And this is a great thing to give you an idea of how long you've been riding so you know when you need to pull over for, for a rest. Um, so you can see it's been 12 minutes since I turned this, this bike on and it was already in first gear so it started counting up right away. Um, and that's uh, uh, more than anything I can look down and say, oh, I'm getting a bit stiff. And I look down and say, oh, it's actually been 90 minutes since I, I got on the bike and started out. So maybe uh, I need to stop for a quick rest. So that's, that's very helpful. And that obviously didn't require any hardware at all. It was just software. And then of course, if I shift into the various gears, if I can actually get it to do that, Maybe not without kicking the wheel around. Let's see if I can move the wheel and get it to shift the gear. I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, maybe if I start it up. Nope, I'm not going to be able to do that. So you'll have to check my word for it. This just changes. N, one, two, three, four, five. It shows what gear the bike is in, and that's just hooked into the, the gear pos position sensor. Uh, and that's one of the things that made this rather hard to install because that sensor connector is buried inside the fairing. Um, the, the computer, this is actually just the screen. You can see there's a ribbon cable that comes out of here that was repurposed from an old uh, floppy drive. It goes down inside here, and then the, the uh, computer is actually in a box inside here. And that's uh, where all the brains are. Um, and that's about it.
that's my, my bike PC that I built seven years ago. Uh, breadboarded it, designed it, um, programmed it, and it's, it's been so useful. I, I, I take it for granted. I, I use it without even thinking all the time. I look down all the time at it. I love seeing what the, the voltage is. I love seeing what gear I'm in. I love seeing the temperature. And of course, it keeps me warm. People ask me all the time about it. And uh, I always meant to create a video like this to explain it, so now I have. Um, and this bike PC is not for sale. I have no intention really of ever marketing it or making it available for sale, um, mainly because it was an awful lot of work to create and an awful lot of work to build into the bike and it's probably something I wouldn't really want to support just because it's so difficult to install. So I hope you like my, my little tour of my Goldwing bike PC. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't yet already subscribed, click subscribe below and then click on that bell so you get notified when we post brand new videos like this one and uh, all about Goldwings and everything you want to know about Goldwing world. Thanks for watching.